Hello everyone and welcome back to the Med Voice channel. My name is Ruchel and I'm one of the three people that run this channel. Today we're going to be talking about what's on the mind of most pre-meds at the moment and that is Casper. Casper has changed for this application cycle so if you do want to find out what those changes are be sure to watch this video and subscribe for future content. Let's get started. For those of you who aren't familiar with what Casper is, it's not that little ghost from the movies. It's actually a situational judgment test that medical schools use to see how you answer difficult ethical and personal scenarios. Many programs use this to evaluate whether you're the right fit for their program, and it's also used in other professions such as nursing and even dentistry. Previously, Casper asked you to respond to 12 different scenarios that were either video-based prompts or written prompts, and you were supposed to answer three questions in the span of five minutes for each scenario in a typed manner. Now, the typed responses still exist in the news cycle, but they're also adding a video response section to the new Casper test. For the new video response section, you're going to have either a video based or a word based prompt. But the difference here with the type section is that for your three follow up questions, you'll only be given one minute per question to actually film your response. And to account for the new video response section, Casper will now have 15 total scenarios, nine of them being typed and six of them being the video responses. This is three more than the previous year. As a result, the test is a lot longer than it once used to be. It used to take a maximum of 90 minutes to complete, but now that's gone up to 120 minutes. This means you'll need a lot more stamina to keep going all 120 minutes. However, thankfully, Casper does have two breaks. It has one five minute break halfway through the type section and also a 10 minute break before the video section. So you should be okay. So how will the test look now? Basically, there's going to be nine typed se sections as we talked about. So after you're done finishing the nine typed sections, you're gonna move on to the six video-based sections, and then you're gonna complete them after the type section is over. For the type section, you'll be given six video-based prompts and three word-based prompts. And for the video section, you'll be given four video-based prompts and two word-based prompts. So you should make sure that you actually practice with both styles of prompts if you want to do the best possible on the Casper exam. One of the most important things to know about Casper is that every scenario is marked by a different rater. This means that the rater doesn't know how you scored on the last one, doesn't know how you scored on the next one, but only independently mark that one scenario. If you want to learn how to take advantage of this fact, then watch our How to Get a Fourth Quartile video that we put up a few weeks ago. What Dimit said is a nice segue into how exactly Casper is scored. The bad news is the Casper website and medical schools don't make this information public, but the website does say that certain personality characteristics are assessed. We'd recommend keeping these characteristics in mind while you're practicing in order to formulate the best possible answer and showcase yourself the best. Now, what does this mean for the scores that you receive back from Casper? It's important to remember that the video-based responses are going to be marked separately from the typed-based responses. This is because there are certain programs that have selected to participate in what's called the Early Adopter Program. Only these schools will have access to the scores for the video-based section as well as the typed section, not the schools that are not participating in the early adopter program. So if you're worried about not being as great at verbally responding to questions, you can rest your concerns a little. But they did mention on the website that they will be releasing a compiled version of the results to all of the schools that you're going to be applying to at the end of the application cycle. For all of you that don't know how Casper gives back your marks, we'll go through a short summary. So until last year, Casper didn't even give you your marks back. And that left a lot of people in the dark because they didn't know what went wrong with their application. Was it how they wrote their ABS statement or was it their Casper score? So because of this, Casper actually started releasing the scores from last year onwards but it is kind of confusing. When you do get that email that your Casper score has been released, you're gonna wanna go on the website and log in to check your score. Schools will generally deliver you the score in a quartile format. 
So you could either score in the first, second, third, or fourth quartile. And let me break this down to you what exactly these quartiles mean. So if you scored in the fourth quartile, this means that you scored better than 75 to 100% of people that took the test on the same day as you. If you scored in the third quartile, this means you scored better than 50 to 75% of people. If you scored in the second quartile, this means you scored better than 25 to 50% of people. And last but not least, if you scored in the first quartile, this means that you scored better than zero to 25% of people that took the test on the same day as you. Generally, the first quartile is the lowest score and the fourth quartile is the highest score. The fourth quartile score or the 75 to 100 mark is what most medical schools are looking for. But some medical schools also don't prefer to weigh in Casper at all. Some medical schools that do consider Casper in Ontario are the DeGroote School of Medicine at McMaster, U Ottawa's Faculty of Medicine, Queen's Faculty of Medicine and Northern Ontario School of Medicine. So now that we've gone over the entire test, let's talk about why Casper and Altus are making these changes on the Casper test, making it longer, making it harder to the dismay of many applicants. Based on their website, Casper says that it's researched many of these differences that occur among test takers and it's shown that the video based scenarios actually have less demographic differences than the typed responses. It's also a well-known fact that there's a heavy emphasis placed upon your typing speed when you're doing the Casper test. So by introducing this new video component, they're also getting rid of that worry that a lot of applicants have. And that brings us to the end of this video. Comment down below what you think of these Casper changes and be sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. Peace out.